Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This Easter day we are in a wilderness of sorts. Our life is hidden behind walls. But because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we believe that the ancient promises to Israel are now extended to us. In the resurrection, God loves you with an everlasting love. God will again build your lives. Christ is your life. God promises to be with you always. Today, the Galilee, where by the power of the Spirit Jesus may be seen alive, is in our own homes, against all sadness. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I invite you to join in an opening litany for this Easter day. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. We join together in singing, Jesus Christ is risen today.
first reading for this Easter day is a reading from the book of Colossians in the third chapter. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this day is a reading from the Gospel of Matthew in the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One of the things I missed most about not being actually at church and gathering together as a group on Sundays for worship, one of the things I missed the most is the children's sermons and the opportunity to gather children to come up front and to talk to the children and to help them understand what the good news of the gospel is for that day. So today I would like to uh, try my best to do a virtual children's message. So if you have children uh, I'd like to invite you to gather them together and, and to watch uh, uh, this part of the video, at least, so that uh, hopefully they can participate in our Easter celebration. So uh, once you have the children gathered together, what I want to do with the children is I want to start by showing them this video. It's a video of, of one of my granddaughters, Joanna, when she was only two years old. Uh, her mother and father took this video of her, and the video is of Joanna reading a storybook. Mrs. Cruz said, It's a scary, what's that scary thing for the wind? Is he, is, is, is that a scary dancer? No. Is it a scary dancer? No. Joanna was only two years old, and of course, she wasn't actually able to read that storybook that, because she didn't know how to read yet. But it looked like she was reading the storybook. And do you know why? Because I bet this happened happens to you all the time when you're young children. Your your mom or your dad they read the stories to you, and then you say, "Read it again, read it again," and they read the story to you over and over again, so many times, so that you can take the book. And even if you don't know how to read, you can read the book yourself because you know it so well. It's been shared with you so much. 
This is the story of Jesus' resurrection, the story of how God loves us so much that Jesus died on the cross to forgive our sins, but then God raised him from the dead so that we might know how much God loves us. We hear the story over and over again. Not only do we hear the story over again, and not only should we read the story over and again, but it's a story we also should tell to other people. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to tell the story of Jesus, how he was born, and in all the things <coughs> he did in his life. Tell the story about how he died, and, and, and that's how much God loves us. And tell the story about how God raised him from the dead. Tell the story so that other people can know how much God loves them as well. So parents, I want you to, um, to do that with your children, you know, not just today on Easter, or certainly today, but not just today, at other times. Find time to tell the story, to read the story, to have the children tell the story to you, and to share the story so much so that it becomes a part of who you are. And you can actually, not even having to have a book, you can tell the story to other people as well. Okay, that's the children's message. Well, it's Easter Sunday. Here we are. Do you feel like giving a cheer to celebrate the fact that it's Easter? You know, cheerleaders, sometimes one of the, the way they cheer for things is, is they, they turn to the crowd and they say, give me, you know, shout out letters. So I'm going to do that with you this morning for Easter. Give me an E. Give me an A. Give me an S. And give me a T. Give me an E. And give me... An R. And what does it spell? Easter. Not only does it spell the word Easter and give us a chance to celebrate Easter, but the, the letters in, in the word Easter provide for me today a, a framework upon which I hope to be able to talk to you about why it's so important for us to know that, that Christ is risen. Easter is all about celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, and the E in the, letter, in the word Easter stands for expectations. The women who came to the tomb on that first Easter certainly had expectations about what they would find when they got to that tomb. They, they expected that there would be a stone there. They expected that, that they would find Jesus' body there in the tomb and that Jesus would be dead. These were their expectations the same way we have certain expectations about Easter. On Easter, we expect that uh, we'll be going to church and that the church will be decorated in a certain way. We expect that there'll be Easter lilies in front of the altar. We expect that there'll be Easter banners hanging on the walls. We expect that everyone will be dressed up in their Easter outfits. We have all these expectations about what should be on Easter day. And in that way, this Easter for us is a lot like the first Easter was for the women because the things that we expect don't happen. We're certainly not gathering in church for Easter. You may have an Easter lily in your house, but it's not like having them in front of the altar, all those Easter lilies and, and, and banners. The expectations that we have for Easter are, are not coming true this Easter as it was for the women. They had expectations about what they would find when they got to the tomb. In the same way that they had expectations for their, for their lives as women, this was part of their job to anoint the body of someone whom they loved, to take care of them. Just like, you know, like when someone we love dies, we, we take upon responsibilities to go and to take care of their graveside, you know, make sure there's flowers and everything, certain expectations. Women in Jesus' day had expectations about what it meant to be a woman living in that time. There are certain boundaries and restrictions. But they also had expectations about what, what would happen when the Messiah came, and they had hoped that Jesus was the Messiah. They certainly had expectations about the Messiah. But I doubt very much that their expectations included that the Messiah would die as Jesus died. We have expectations for our lives all the time. And, and when expectations, the thing we expect are going to happen, when our expectations don't happen, when our expectations are not met, well, it leads to something else. The next letter, of course, in the word Easter, A stands for anxiety. 
when our expectations are not met, we get anxious. There's a lot of anxiety going on now with people wondering how long is this pandemic going to last? Wondering how is it going to affect us in the future? I mean, people have money in, in uh, retirement plans. The money is going down and they're wondering what's going to happen there. There's a lot of unmet expectations. We had hoped that we'd be able to spend time with family and friends on Easter. That's not happening either. But it's not the first time expectations haven't been met. There's a lot of times in, in our lives when we make plans, when we have certain expectations, but then it doesn't quite happen. It happens all the time in, in relationships and marriages where, where people have expectations of each other and and they fall apart, they don't happen. We have certain expectations about jobs that we take, and, and when those expectations are not met, it leads to fear, and, and sometimes even to anger. We get frustrated, all bound up, and wondering, now what? Now what? And when we are filled with anxiety and fear and frustration, anger, it sometimes moves us to the next letter in the word Easter, which is the letter S it stands for. It leads us to this feeling of being stuck. We feel stuck. We don't know what to do. The women were, came to the tomb and, and, and the angels said, don't be afraid. You know, you seek Jesus, but he is not here. He's risen just as he said, now go. And we're told by Matthew that they left, but they were filled with, with joy and fear. They weren't quite sure what to think or what to do. And, and in Mark's gospel, Mark says they end up saying nothing to anyone. They felt, I suspect in many ways, they felt stuck. What do we do now? Nothing is happening the way we expected it would happen. When, when, when you feel like you're out of control, that, that, that nothing is taking place the way that you would expect it to take place, sometimes it leads to feeling stuck. You don't know what to do. There's nothing I can do. You feel helpless, hopeless. The story Garrison Keillor tells about when he was a little boy and going to church, and uh, he remembered that when he would sit in church, he would sit between his his mother. His mother would be on one side of him, his father would be on the other side of him. And, and Garrison Keillor said he would sit there in the church as a child, and uh, uh, he would sit still, perfectly still. And if he moved a little, tried to to adjust his spot, he'd either get an elbow from one side from his mother or an elbow from the other side from his father, and he. He had to sit there perfectly still and just be quiet during church. And Garrison Keillor said as he thought about that, sitting in church sometimes frozen in place, he, he said it felt like this must be what death is like. And in fact, it is what death is like to be, to be stuck in one place and, and laid out in a coffin. You can't move. You're just stuck. Jesus died on the cross, but the good news of Easter, of course, is that that didn't stay that way. He wasn't stuck in that tomb. That God acted to raise him from the dead, to bring new life. We may feel stuck in our homes, and we are in many ways stuck. We may feel like you know we've lost control. We can't do all the things we want to do. Be all the places we'd love to be. We we feel like. There's nothing we can do about it, but, but God has acted, even in the midst of this time for us, to give us, to give us something to hope for and a reason for living. When we feel stuck, we need to be moved on to the next letter in the word Easter, which is the letter T, uh, to trust. We need to trust in something other than ourselves. By ourselves, we can't do much about this, but if we, if we trust in God, then it gives us a, a sense of confidence and hope because we know that God, with God, all things are possible. If only we let go of our need to be always in control, of our need to always be in charge, to be the one who's planning everything, and, and, and to, to want things to be just the way we think they should be. If we can let go of that in order to trust in God, then we are set free. If we trust in God's will, and what is God's will? Well, it's very simple. Jesus proclaimed it for us. This is what God's will is, that we should love one another. 
even as God loves us, so we should love one another unconditionally. Not easy, but when it happens, when we are moved from being stuck and, and frustrated and fearful, when we, when we begin to trust in the, the power of God's love for us, when we begin to place ourselves in God's loving hands, we begin to trust we can move into love for other people, unconditional love. It happens sometimes, not always. But when it happens, then we move to the next letter in the word Easter, which is another E, it leads to excitement. It's exciting to know that God is in control. It's exciting to know that there are visions of, of, of great things and, and, and possibilities that we could never imagine by ourselves, but are possible because God promises to be with us. And he loves us. And he empowers us with that love to love one another. When you can finally move beyond the fear of death and being stuck, then you can begin to experience the excitement, the joy of God's love for us. It's not, it's not like any regular kind of excitement, like when you get a present, you say, oh, I'm excited about this present. No, the excitement of, of trusting in God is, is more like the excitement that a parent feels when a baby is born. New life. Well, there's some fear and anxiety also that parents have at that time. But, but in that moment, when you hold that child for the first time, you look and you think, wow, how exciting is that? Where it's, it's, it's the excitement then that, that couples feel on their wedding day, on their wedding day, excitement of something new, a new life together. There's some anxiety and fear and, and you know, expectations that happen afterwards. But in that moment, when two people say, I do, I do love you. That's the kind of excitement that Easter brings for us. This, this is what God has said to us. I love you unconditionally. Now, here's all I want for you is to be able to love one another like that, to share that kind of loving excitement with other people. It happens again for grandparents when grandchildren are born. Wow, that's exciting. Unconditional love. Raleigh Martin's son, who is a professor at a seminary, used to be a professor at a seminary in, in uh, Minnesota, uh, told a story about his granddaughter. He had a granddaughter, and he said when she was very little, they, he would go to visit his granddaughter at their home. When he would open the door and, and his granddaughter's bedroom was upstairs, she would hear him his voice and she would come running to the top of the stairs and he'd be at the bottom of the stairs she would be up at the top of the stairs he would look up at her and she would look down at him and and raleigh martin said that she would just leap for joy she would leap off the top of the stairs and he would catch her in his arms and he said they would do their happy dance together how exciting to share a moment of unconditional love with someone else That kind of excitement leads us then to a deeper understanding of the last letter in the word Easter, which is, of course, the letter R for resurrection or risen. He is risen. Because Christ is living, we now are resurrection people. We are Easter people. We live resurrection lives. It describes how we can live our lives even when we feel like we're stuck in our homes, even when we're in the midst of this uncertain time how we can live our lives no longer being anxious and fearful, no longer feeling stuck or doubtful, but being confident and joyful and bold and filled with hope for the future, for tomorrow and the next day and the day after that, because we know that God is with us. Raleigh Martinson went on to say that Later on, as he got older and his granddaughter got older, he would remember those moments when she would jump in his arms. And he said, you know, I thought to myself that, you know, when the day comes when I die and I, and I open my eyes in heaven, this is what it will be like. My taking uh, a step from, from this life to the next life is like my granddaughter jumping off that staircase. And I will, I will leap from this life to the next life, and God will be there. Jesus will be there to embrace me, and we will do the happy dance together. What a great picture that is of, of life eternal. 
gives us something to hope for, and that gives us something to be to be excited about in the moment, even when there's a lot of things out of our control. We know that all things are in God's control and that he has promised to be with us even unto the end of the age. Easter is a celebration of God's love for you and for me, now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. I invite you to join together with me in singing a hymn for this day that was written especially for this time. It is entitled, This Easter Celebration. <laughs> Thank you.
Dear members of God's family, on this Easter day marked by both sorrow and joy, our prayers for the church, for the world, and for all in need include both heartfelt lament and fervent praise. The response to each prayer of mercy will be, your mercy endures forever. And the response to each acclamation of praise will be, Alleluia, thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, our sanctuary, we lament that we cannot gather today for public worship, that death stalks the church, and that our sorrows and fears blunt out our songs of Alleluia. Show the church your mercy. Your mercy endures forever. And yet around the globe, we praise you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave, for our baptismal washing in his life for your presence, come to us in the word and for the hope the gospel brings. We praise you for the church. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. God, our creator, we lament that our lifestyles have harmed your creation and that our efforts to repair your earth are often postponed. Show the earth your mercy. Your mercy endures forever. And yet we praise you for the beauty of the natural world, for springtime flowers and budding trees, for the soil and rain that nourish the crops. We praise you for the earth. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. God, our governor, we lament that war and violence still rage that countless people suffer injustice, that the plight of refugees seems beyond solution, that appropriate governmental action is delayed and often inadequate. Show the world your mercy. Your mercy endures forever. And yet we praise you that there is peace on our streets, that some elected officials and many aid agencies are devoting themselves to save the people and to share our food, and that we are given connection to friends and family through technology. We praise you for community. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. God, our physician, we lament all who suffer, those whom we name before you and whom we hold on our hearts. And then again, especially we lament the coronavirus and its incalculable suffering, the many thousands who are sick, the fear instilled, the loss of employment, the cancellation of plans, the overflow in hospitals, the scarcity of supplies, the exhaustion of medical staff. Show all the needy your mercy. Your mercy endures forever. And yet we praise you for health and well-being wherever it thrives, for the dedication of medical workers, for the goodwill of volunteers, for the generosity of benefactors, and for the comfort we receive from the power of the resurrection. We praise you for healing. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. God, our everlasting arms, mother us in our heartache and distress. Receive now our personal laments and help each of us to praise your name. We praise you for hearing our prayers. Alleluia, thanks be to God. God, our life eternal, we lament the thousands who are dead and the sadness of all who mourn. And we remember before you all who have died in faith. Show to all humanity your mercy. Your mercy endures forever. And yet here we join in our alleluias and we praise you on this Easter day for your promise of an endless banquet of joyous life in your presence when disease and sorrow will be no more. In life and death we praise you. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
you are source of life, word of salvation, and power of mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your compassionate might. For the sake of him who lived and died and rose for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. And Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. I want to wish all of you a very joyful and blessed Easter celebration. I hope you have time to spend with your families, and I look forward to the day when we can come together again as one church family.